And this is an idea that exists in Yom Kippur itself, in the Machser, as well it exists throughout Judaism. How does Judaism view the human being or the human condition for that matter? And we have a certain dialectical approach to a human being. Meaning what? What is a human being? Is he the lowliest of creatures or the greatest of all creations? Right. So we have this concept, shiflus ha'adam, gadlus ha'adam. Okay? Just to give you an example. Right in the middle of chapter 8 of Perik Ches of Tehillim, Kapitel Ches, what does it say? Ma enosh kisis karenu. What is a human being, God, that you would even be concerned or being aware with a human being? In the context of, the, of creations, there's not that much different between us genetically and a maggot. Is there a hashkach, a pratis over a maggot? No, the Rishonim say not. So what is a human being that you would be concerned with? But then the very next verse, it says what? David HaMelech says, Vatechasreu ma'at, and there's a debate how to read this next word. Vatechasreu ma'at me'elokim or me'elohim. You created the human being just a little bit less than God Almighty himself, or some of Horsham say just a little bit less than the angels. You see the dialectic? The grandeur, the majesty of the human condition? The lowliness, the insignificance, the frail nature of the human condition. That dialectic between the greatness of man and the, and the, the limited nature of the human being, you see that in a number of places. We're going to go to the Machser in just a moment. But... We have, and the Rav said this, there are two types of viduyim that we have in the Torah, two models. What's the standard model of vidui? The standard model of vidui is what? The tzabrochene yid saying, hashamnu, bagadnu, gazalnu, right? We're broken. We failed ourselves. We failed our maker. We failed our friends, our community. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha, right? The vidui, the confessional. But there's a second vidui. That's in Parshas Kisava. We just read this a couple of weeks ago. It's called vidui maser. Twice in the seven-year cycle, there are two mini-cycles in the seven-year agricultural cycle. At the end of those cycles, what happens? The Jewish agriculturalists, and remember, the GNP in antiquities was primarily an agribusiness. Today, that's not the case, but it was then. The Jew stands up and says, listen, God, you've made me your partner. You've given me a challenge, and I've lived up to everything. I've given the Kohen his due, the Truma, the Levim I've taken care of. I've supported them, our educational group. They've gotten my Sarisha. I've supported the economy of Yerushalayim. They've gotten my Sarshani. I did, did it everything. I followed the proper Seder, the proper order of how to give, when to give. I didn't partake of something in a state of Tuma when it shouldn't be partaken of in a state of Tuma. I've done everything you've commanded me. Now, God, it's your turn. You from your holy abode, you now do yours. That's not the vidui, and it's called vidui maser. That's not the vidui of the Jew bent over, beating his chest, broken before the Almighty. If anything, it talks about what? The Jew was given an opportunity, and the Jew lived up to that opportunity. The Jew fulfilled his purpose. He supported the community. He supported the educational group. He supported Yerushalayim. So what is this? And the answer is there are two types of viduyim. On the one hand, a Jew is a, we are humble. There's a sense of humility out there that we know what we could have been, we know what we should have been. And we feel that we failed ourselves, we failed our maker, we failed those who trusted in us. On the other hand, if that's all a Jew has, then you're depressed. You'll never accomplish. You'll never strive. You'll never attain anything. You need the other model. And it's a dialectic. It's a tension between the two. And that is what? Look at what I can do. And look at what happens when I'm given the opportunity. I can fulfill my potential. And I can partner with the Almighty. 